my name is David Pagan Butler and today I'm just going to do a little chat about floating islands. Now, floating islands in a natural swimming pool may be nothing more complicated than a piece of insulation with a hole cut in it and a plant bunked in it and then over, it's over a, over a year actually, uh, you end up with a root system like that which will filter the water. You can critify this by putting timber around it, putting a cloth over it, geotextile over it and putting on some stones and, and more plants actually. Um, but that's basically the principle. Um, however, um, today I'm going to make uh, a floating island from an old tyre. Now you're probably thinking an old tyre, well isn't that full of toxins? Well um, I did read a report quite a few years ago now, probably about 15 years ago, um, about some research and it said that um, uh, tires that have been kept in water for a few years or uh, exposed to rain actually in this experiment they were in, in a breakwater um, they were they were perfectly perfectly clean in the, in the toxicity test they used trout and the worst tires were old tires freshly taken from the road and they had a lot of uh, tox toxins and heavy metals that they picked up from the road freshly made new tires gave out a lot of volatile organic carbons but the ones left in water were fine now these tires have been knocking around in the garden for about 15 years and before that they were probably about five years outside the garage so they had a lot of rain on them um, <clears throat> even so I used a load of these in making my pool and just to make sure I had the water tested specifically for cadmium levels because there was some stuff on the internet about cadmium coming from tyres. Um, and um, the water passed, water t pass, water test came back as zero levels of cadmium. So I think they work. Um, anyway, it's a very simple and it'd be a great uh, idea to reuse something as uh, common as one of, as, as one of these. Anyway, uh, so we have a tyre. A load of uh, bottles, these are old milk bottles, and all I'm going to do is shove them in there, but before that, just need something uh, in there. So, uh, this is an old crab net, and I'm just going to jab, jab, put that in there, and um, it just, you know, blocks up the hole, obviously. Okay, um, alternatively, you could make something, you can make something from a bit of, a bit of old pipe, plastic pipe, and um, some geotextile, something like that pushed in. You'd have to fix it down there, put some holes in the cloth, or um, just use dab welding to put that in place. You could do something like that, that's water permeable. Uh, an old laundry basket, and anything will work. Anyway, that's in there, crab nets in there. These bottles, they're just going to jam in. Um, There's nothing really to see. These bottles seem to fit better side on, but any bottles will do. Oh, I sound a bit breathless today. And there's another one. Right, okay. So now we've got our floats in there. Uh, so uh, all we need now is a plant. Um, now I've hoiked this out of. Um, Actually, out of the neighbour's pond, um, but it was with their consent. They were they were actually uh, taking their pond apart. Uh, this is pickerel weed and some grass, but actually grass is great as well. So all I'm going to do is just shove it in there like that. Now let's see if it floats. I should have rehearsed this. Yeah, it seems to work, so all we need to do now is um, just trim the plants a bit, maybe put some stones around there. I might take some of the bottles out just to lower the level that it floats at, just to make it more aesthetically pleasing. That will do its job of filtering the water. So there we go. 
one idea for making a floating island.